This is Carson TV News, your Capital City News Source. Hello and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Carson TV News, your source for Nevada's Capital City News. I'm Courtney Bloomer. Pi Day is celebrated on March 14th around the world. Pi, the Greek letter, is a symbol used in mathematics to represent a constant, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, which is approximately 3.14159. Here's Euclid with more. Pi is a mysterious constant that I was never able to completely calculate. Apparently, even your 21st century magical mystery computational machines haven't been able to fix its value. I guess that's why you all celebrate it. Apparently, you have set aside the 14th day of the third month to talk about Pi and other mathematical mysteries. March 14, or 314. It does seem magical, doesn't it? And in your 21st century, the 15th year will be 31415. That's wonderful! But there's even more for you to celebrate. You see, when your clock shows 926 and 53 seconds on that day, you will be at a rare pi second. Only once each century does the date and time represent pi to nine decimal places. Wild Horse Children's Theater is bringing another production to the Brewery Arts Center Performance Hall in Carson City. These talented youngsters will take the stage for two weekends to present Disney Junior's 101 Dalmatians. The show will run Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for two weekends beginning on March 13th. Pat Jostin of Wild Horse Children's Theater is here to tell you a little bit more about the production. Hi, I'm Pat Jostin, executive producer of Wild Horse Children's Theater, and we're here today to tell you about our latest production coming up, Disney's 101 Dalmatian Kids. We'll be performing at the Brewery Arts Center Performance Hall, which is at 511 West King Street in Carson City. Our show dates are Fridays, March 13th and 20th at 7 p.m., Saturdays, March 14th and 21st at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., and Sunday, March 15th and 22nd at 2 p.m. These are all our shows for the public, and we also have special daytime school shows for schools, preschools, and daycares on Wednesday, March 18th at 9, 11, and 1. You can call for reservations at 887-0438 or go to our website at www.wildhorsetheater.com to purchase tickets online. We have a large cast of uh, children in this show, ages 4 to 14. We're having a great time with this show, and we'd love to see you at the show. Today I brought Cruella DeVille with me, and she is having a wonderful time with her little puppies that are in the show. Cruella? Come see the show, yes, and all the little puppies. <laughs> Thank you, Pat and Cruella. Don't miss your chance to see the Broadway revived production of Pippin, starring an incredible cast, crew, and pit orchestra of talented and dedicated students. Pippin is a musical by Stephen Schwartz, who also wrote the recently produced, critically acclaimed Wicked. Due to strong language and suggestive situations, this show is not recommended for children under 12. The show will take place at the Bob Oldrick Theater in the Carson City Community the community center at the times and dates shown on your screen. Admission is $12 for the general public and $5 for middle and high school students. Steam Night at Eagle Valley Middle School was held on Thursday, March 5th. For those unfamiliar with Steam, it's all about science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. The Carson City School District is making a concerted effort to create enthusiasm for these types of programs. Steam Night at Eagle Valley Middle School was a success this year, featuring the school's FLL LEGO teams that will be competing at the North American Championships. The kids spent the evening demonstrating their robots and programs. The LEGO teams are looking for donations to help defray the cost of competing and traveling to the national competition May 15th through 17th in Carlsbad, California at Legoland. To make a donation, please contact Lisa Stock Coop, Eagle Valley Middle School's STEM coordinator, at the email shown on your screen. In this week's health and wellness segment, star Nick Storff of Paradise Salon, Spa and Wellness shares a little more information with us on keeping a log of your time. Hi, this is Star with Paradise Salon, Spa and Wellness. Last time we talked about creating a time log and being able to log your time. So now you have this information that tells you really what you're doing. 
And when you know this, you can isolate times that are being wasted possibly to do the things that are on your top 100 list. What's a top 100 list? A top 100 list is like a, bu a bucket list. And that bucket list allows you to say, these are the things I'm wanting to accomplish. I'm gonna do a fundraiser for my favorite nonprofit organization. Or maybe I'm going to run a half marathon. You then know where you can set some time in to train for that half marathon. You can set up some time to buy a good pair of running shoes. You can also look for that um, time that you keep repeating a certain uh, set of job duties and it seems like you're redundantly doing that over and over again and you can streamline those out and instead of doing them on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then again on Fridays, maybe just getting them done on Thursday will be enough. So analyzing that sheet, seeing where have you got time that's being wasted or where do you have time that is open and then saying at this time I am going to accomplish you fill in the blank. Are you going to write a novel? Maybe you need to start writing chapter one. Or are you actually going to make an Etsy store? Um, we're talking health and wellness. So you can say when am I going to exercise? But to me wellness is more than just exercise or eating right. It's fulfilling those dreams and having passion in your life and really going for it. So when you know what you're using your time for, you can then better prioritize those things that are really important and fulfill your life dreams and get that sensation, that well-being sensation that is crucial to you remaining healthy and well. Well, this is Star at Paradise, and I hope to see you there. Darla's Hidden Gem this week is right in front of you anytime you've stopped at the crossroads of Highway 395 and Highway 50, right in Carson City. Heidi's is a great breakfast and lunch alternative in Carson City, and here's some more about this Carson City institution. Heidi's Family Restaurant. We are at 1020 North Carson Street. Our restaurant's been here since about the building itself has been here since um, the 1930s. We're open from 6.30 in the morning till 2 in the evening. We have everything from crepes to pancakes, French toast, burgers, steak, seafood. There's been some changes around here, but the very front of the building, we have three big windows. It used to be just three. It went into four windows because a long time ago a uh, semi-truck went around the corner and came into the building so that's changed just a little bit. We've done a lot of upgrades on the inside, you know, new um, paintings and carpet and just upgrades to the booths and things like that so we have a nice fresh atmosphere. We do have a lot of old um, old time pictures in the restaurant to look at, old downtown Carson, Virginia City. We have a big um, picture of the actual old building itself and it was like I said back in 1935. One over here to Heidi's is 8820486. The Miss Carson City pageant was held last Saturday at the Carson City Community Center. Young ladies from around the area competed for the titles of Miss Carson City, Carson City's Outstanding Teen, and Douglas County's Outstanding Teen. At the end of the evening, three lucky young ladies walked away with local titles. Carson City's Outstanding Teen is Michaela Radecki. Tori Henry captured the title of Douglas County's Outstanding Teen, and Brianna Neben was crowned Miss Carson City. Miss Neben will represent Carson City in the Miss Nevada pageant, a preliminary for Miss America. You are invited to join a ranger-led hike at Washoe Lake State Park next weekend, March 14th at 10 a.m. The hike is a moderate two and a half mile round trip hike through the sand dunes on the southeast side of Washoe Lake. Participants should bring good walking shoes as the trail may be sandy, muddy, or hopefully snow covered. We'll talk about the history of the park and of Washoe Valley. Participants should meet at the equestrian area at the south part of the park. After passing the fee booth, turn right, past the campground, and park near the group pavilion. These hikes are included with the park's entrance fee of $7 per vehicle. Nevada residents get a $2 discount. For more information, please call the number on your screen. Lynette Garner joins us again today with another Modern Manners segment on cell phone etiquette. Hello, 
and welcome to the Modern Manners Tips and Tricks segment of the show. Today I want to continue to shed some light on cell phone manners. Speakerphone, dear speakerphone, thou keeps me from struggle whilst trying to talk in regular tone and mastering the juggle. Yes, that poem was more than a little cheesy, but it proves a point. The idea of this speakerphone is to allow people to multitask. Our hands are free from holding the phone as we work on something else. Studies have shown that people are really not great at multitasking, so please don't think it truly helps accomplish much more. In fact, when we multitask, we avoid giving our full attention to any one thing, and that means we aren't doing any of the activities as well as we could. There are times when it is necessary, but probably not as much as we think. Using the speakerphone should not be a common practice. In public, it should be used very thoughtfully. If it's a chance for a group to talk to someone, then it is fine. Don't do this in a setting where other people could be disrupted, though. It should be made known to the person on the other end who can hear this call, and that person should be the one to decide if it is okay or not to be put on speaker. Not everybody likes it, and it can be much harder to hear. This is also why one should raise his or her voice a bit more when speaking on the speakerphone, and also why people should be careful about doing it in public. These rules apply when the speakerphone is being used through a Bluetooth as well. This could be in the car or through headphones. Consider your environment, your audience, and the person on the other end of the line. As with all manners, the rules of the speakerphone usage were created so as to show respect for those around you. On Saturday, March 14th, the inaugural St. Patty's Film Crawl will take place in Carson City. It's film competition that partners filmmakers and downtown businesses. From 4 to 10 p.m., you can crawl from one business to the next to see all the films entered in this once-a-year competition based on a St. Patrick's Day fact or fiction. Filmmaking teams were asked to partner with businesses and promote their film as well as the business. The Audience Choice Award will be given to the film that accrues the most likes on Digital Arts Factory and Wired Wednesday Facebook pages on the date of the crawl. With an update on all your baseball and softball action, here's Keith with sports. The Carson Senators baseball team started things off right last Thursday, winning their season opener against Truckee 8-3. Then Friday, they continued to look great as they rolled over Reed by a score of 10-2. But Reno High put an end to the celebration in the nightcap as the Senators were unable to get a hit, and the Huskies came out on top 10-0. To Saturday didn't go much better as the team lost to Douglas 13-5 and to Galena by a score of 6-4. The Senators softball team was swept Saturday by Reed 11-0 and 18-0, dropping them to 1-2 on the season. In bowling, the Carson High team got off to a great start in the playoffs, defeating Wooster 36-9. WNC's baseball games were moved to Carson due to inclement weather in Salt Lake City, and the Wildcats put home field advantage to good use, winning three out of four starting with a game that was called by darkness on Thursday with the score tied 3-3 through 12 innings. Picking up where they left off at noon on Friday, Tim Litchie hit the first pitch of the 13th inning out of the park to break the tie and eventually give Western Nevada the win 4-3. Then it was time to play the doubleheader that was already scheduled for Friday, with the Wildcats pulling off a 2-0 shutout in the first and finishing up with an 8-6 win to complete the doubleheader. Then Saturday, Salt Lake Community College took the final game of the series by a score of 9-8. Meanwhile, over at Edmond Sports Complex, the WNC softball team was swept by Salt Lake in a pair of doubleheaders Friday, 12-2 and 5-2, then Saturday, 11-2 and 10-1. That's it for this week's edition of Carson TV News. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Courtney Bloomer. We'll see you next week.